Okay, so let's have a look at the Junior Certificate Higher Level Maths Paper 2 for 2019, questions 13 and 14. So in the first question here, we're asked to use trigonometry to work out the value of x in the diagram below. Give your answer correct in two decimal places. What we're going to use here is tan because we have the opposite and the adjacent. So the tan of 20 degrees is equal to 6 over x. That will just multiply across by x. That will give us x tan 20 is equal to 6. Now, because the x is multiplied by the tan 20, divide by tan 20, you get x is equal to 6 over tan 20 degrees. And that gives 16.48. Um, so we end up with x is equal to 16.48 uh, to two decimal places. Okay, so that's part A done. So let's have a look at part B. In part B here, we have a different right angle triangle and it has sides of length, lengths A, B, and C here, and an angle Y and a right angle here. Now, in this triangle, A plus B is bigger than C. Well, that has to be the case in all triangles. If A plus B was less than C, it wouldn't actually form a triangle. So A plus B is bigger than C. Use this to prove that cos Y plus sine Y is bigger than one, greater than one. Well, let's work these out. We have cos Y, so cos y is adjacent, which is a, over hypotenuse, which is c. Sine y is um, the opposite, which is b, over the hypotenuse, which is c. So we want to add these two. So cos y plus sine y uh, is equal to a over c plus b over c. Now, that just means then that cos y plus sine y is equal to, we're just going to add these two fractions here. If you add them, c is our common denominator. So c um, into c is 1, 1 times a is a. c into c is 1, 1 times b is b. So we end up with a plus b over c. Now in the question, we know that a plus b is bigger than c. So the numerator of this fraction is bigger than the denominator. So this is an improper fraction. So that means that since um, since we're given uh, since we know that um, a plus b is bigger than c, that means a plus b divided by c must be bigger than one. This is an improper fraction. The numerator is bigger than the denominator, so c divided into the numer numerator must be bigger than one. That would then mean that <coughs> because a plus b over c is bigger than one a plus b over c is equal to cos y, cos y plus sine y, that must be bigger than 1 as well, since a plus b over c is equal to cos y plus sine y. So that's it really. Okay, so next one then we have um, a cylinder has radius of r, so let me just put that in here actually. Uh, so we have a radius r here, whoops do that again so we have a radius of r um, and a height of 10 centimeters so we have 10 centimeters here okay the cylinder is melted down and made into a cone so it's going to be made into this cone here the cone also has radius r so the distance from here to here is also going to be r and it has height h so this distance down along here is h 10 percent of the volume of the cylinder is lost during this process work out the percentage increase in the height of the cylinder when it is made into a cone. Okay, so we're looking at volumes here. So we've got to work out the volume, the volume of our cylinder. Volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. In this particular case, it's pi times r is r, so it's r squared here, and 10 is the height. So in other words, we get 10, I'll put the number first, 10 pi r squared, these are centimeters and it's cubed. Now, when we melt this cylinder down to make the cone, we're gonna lose 10% of this volume here. So in other words, the volume, the volume of our cone is gonna be 90%, 90% of 10 pi or squared centimeters cubed. So 90% of 10 is just nine. So it's gonna be nine pi or squared centimeters cubed. Now the volume of a cone, the volume of a cone is just um, a third pi r squared h. So that means we have a third pi r squared h 
equal to 9 pi r squared. This is the volume of our actual cone. So that's equal to a third pi r squared h. So you can see here that everything on the left is multiplied, everything on the right is multiplied. So we can divide by pi to give us 1 on each side. We can divide by r squared to give us 1 on each side. So we end up with a third h is equal to 9. Multiply across by 3 to get rid of the third. So that gives you 3 nines, 27 centimeters. So the height of our, the height of our uh, cone here is just um, 27 centimeters. So what do we have to do? We have to work out the percentage increase in the height of the cylinder. How much has the height here increased to make this cone here? So let's work that out. We're going from 10 up to 27. So the, um, we're going from 10 centimeters up to 27 centimeters. So the increase, the increase in height the increase in height is equal to 27 minus 10, which is 17 centimeters. How do you work out the percentage increase then? Well, the percent, whoops, the percentage increase. So how much is 10 increased by the percentage increase in height? The percentage increase in height then is just 17 divided by the original height, which was 10, multiply that by 100. So what you get here then is um, 17 divided by 10, which is 1.7. 1.7 multiplied by 100 is 170%. So you can see that that would be the case. We went from 10 up to 27. Increase, increase 10 by, um, if you increase 10 by 100%, that would bring it up to 20, increase by another 7%. 7% of 10 is 7, so it's 20 plus 7, which is 27 centimeters. Okay, so that's it for these questions and indeed this paper.